DTDWM, do the dishes with me. That's what we're doing today. If you have dishes needing to be done, go ahead and do them with me. Don't even do them, just throw them on the ground and break them and sweep them up and throw them in the trash because I need your full undivided attention. Thank you. Does this work? Does any of this work? Okay, so is this whole pile and it needs to go away onto this rack over here. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm not a huge fan of germs. Germs is how, you know, diseases start and it's how lives end. So I put these on because uh, food germs grosses me out. It's like I'm performing open heart surgery on a plate and a bowl. I'm like house from the show house. I operate under what's called a three sponge system. One sponge for the actual plates, one for kind of the grimier stuff, and this one's for like cleaning the actual sink. This is for the real dirty stuff. I keep the faucet running at a very low pressure uh, while I do the dishes. It's probably bad, it's probably not great for the world, but my logic here is that, I don't know, 15, 10, 15 minutes of this uh, can't be any more than any the average child, baby child's shower. And I love thinking about baby children's showers because I think about how much water is used and how much, how little it is, how they love to save the earth with their small bodies. And that's kind of what I'm participating here when I do the dishes with just a little amount of water. Dishwashers, God bless them, they use pretty efficient water from from what I understand, but I don't have that in my apartment, so we're just going, we're going knees to the balls. Country girls make do. If you follow me for my other channel, you probably follow me for, I don't know, uh, political analysis maybe, hopefully not, uh, just entertainment, finding weird guys, breaking down misogyny in revolutionary new intellectual ways, such as calling fresh and fit cringe. But one type of content I uh, enjoy watching, but I do not partake in, but I want to kind of, is like lifestyle type content. Kind of embarrassing to admit it uh, because lifestyle content is, I don't know, maybe it's elitist to say that it's a very low engagement form of content, but honestly it is. It's just some person cleaning their house and showing their apartment, talking about, you know, their feelings or whatever, or giving stories from their lives in their apartment. Usually there's a self-help twinge to it. You know, a lot of them have a self-help twinge. Not all of it is shallow, and I'm being probably pretty cynical by saying that, but the stuff that I like is, for sure. It's like aesthetic apartments uh, on Instagram reels, making tea and coffee in the morning, and snuggling up on your view of the Shanghai skyline. Lifestyle content is kind of a guilty pleasure for me. You know, I like watching, I'll, I'll watch a Hamza video. Sure, he's extremely weird about women and all sorts of other weird stuff. In researching, I start getting recommended his videos more. And then he has one about video game addiction. And I'm kind of like, damn, he's kind of spitting here. I deal with that. Watching it uh, makes me want to play video games less and then maybe I play them less that day. Usually I do. Lifestyle or self-help content. It's not gonna save the world. It's very individualistic. Uh, the people that make it are benefiting and profiting off of people that usually, you know, they don't have their life figured out. No one does, but especially this group because they're looking uh, to the internet for guidance. But to me, none of that really matters if the content is making a positive difference. If one video makes someone sort of get out of bed and, and go for a walk so their mental health improves, that to me, I think is it's a good video. If a video gets someone in the gym, someone that wants to go to the gym in the gym, this is not some systemic move uh, against big sugar companies and big foods that are adverse to people's health and make them gain weight and make them lose muscle. It's just getting you out of bed. Very simple. There's this weird cross throats that my mind sits at right now. Where the focus of content, a lot of people I watch, the focus is on the politics of liberation, on articulating political ideas and laying the groundwork for those to be put into motion, whether that's socialism, economics, the dismantlement, the dismantling of uh, white supremacy, bigotry, uh, what have you. These are broader systems with a very broad and rightfully so focus on widespread action. This is the type of content I like. This is the type of content I'm most identify with. This is the type of content that I feel in the long term has the potential to make the most difference. However, uh, in the meantime, in order to get to that point, in order to achieve an action of this project, is that you gotta be, you gotta get out of the house, you know? I shouldn't say get out of the house because physically I know that's not a possibility for a lot of people. What I mean is, is sort of accomplish things, create things in reality. Education is one form of that, but it is just one component of a multi-headed uh, beast called the dismantlement of uh, white supremacist, imperialist, capitalist patriarchy. I think I got, I got it wrong, but that's a lot of words. That's a big project. We gotta get going, you know? We gotta take things beyond uh, the consumption of content and into the real world. You may here be noticing a very important and large contradiction, which is that Noah, you create content for consumption, 
Not a lot of your content has radical calls to action. This getting out the house thing isn't even something that you do, my guy. What are you, why are you scolding us? And that's where I'm gonna jump in to say that I actually, I'm not here to scold anyone. I'm not here, here to tell you what to do or how to do it. But what I do know is that lifestyle self-help content has in the past helped me to put things in motion in the real world. I know that's the case for a lot of people if I read the comments of some of these videos. It's anecdotal, sure, but I don't see the point in acting like there's no value in that. And furthermore, that interests me as a potential project to undergo. I don't know how many times I'm scrubbing these. I'm just thinking and talking and these are getting over cleaned probably, but I forget what I was trying to say there. Switching up that angle. I was in the priest with the friend of Mr. Beast. Oh, this is the delicious shot. I don't I don't do politics in real life. I'm not a organizer. I don't do really anything in the real world other than, you know, I'll go to protests. I'm not involved in organizations. And so I may be speaking out of turn when I point out that productivity and self-help content might be one way to uh, improve our ability to enact change in it through activism. I don't even know if that's true, you know? And I also, when I've asked about it before, I've uh, got a lot of feedback from people saying that it doesn't work for them. Like, it doesn't do anything meaningful, it's usually a grift. Unless it's very specific and run by professionals, there's no way to quantify the efficacy of this type of content. And, I mean, that's pretty valid, I would say. I know for a fact, though, personally, that I've, I've done gym vlogs before, and I've had a lot of people tell me, hey, these are, these are helping me stay active. My mom and my sister both did that, and so did a bunch of people that commented, and so did FD signifier. He told me that in a Discord call and I said, ooh wee, I'm making left two ripped. I'm getting everybody ripped. This is anecdotal again, and it's individualistic. I'm one person, I'm giving people something to consume that makes individuals go take action. But I guess uh, it starts at the individual level. You know, it does. To get into a collective position, it requires a bunch of individuals collectively collecting themselves to get into a collective position. I guess one point about this that I didn't talk about that I should is that the important point about this content is that it is consistent, you know, is that when you wake up, uh, much like you would have a reminder in your calendar, let's say, you see a video from the Noah Sampson cleaning channel of me doing the dishes, and then you say, huh, I gotta do the dishes. This thing that I see and am engaging with visually with my eyes and my brain is giving me an example of how doing the dishes is a thing you can just do, and then it's done, and then you can eat off the dishes, and even your sink doesn't stink as well. My sink stunk because I made beef stroganoff like three days ago, and I didn't clean it up, and there was a pan full of, it was forming into more new mushrooms from the stroganoff, and that is disgusting. So that is part of what holds me back from fully delving into lifestyle content, is that it takes consistency, and a consistency is something that I don't have as a creator. I don't have discipline. So not only am I doing a disservice to those consuming the content and following a channel, but I, I'm not even a voice of authority on this type of thing because I can't, I can't stick to making a video every day. I can't stick to making even a video like every few days. I want to eventually. But right now I'm not. And so the format required for that content, which is a daily or consistent upload that people see in their notifications and then they enact whatever process is there, that continual checking in isn't there if you just upload once every few months. It can be there if the video is a sort of in-depth instruction that requires more time to create and that can be enacted over time. Hey, hey, stop. Stop. But in my opinion, the most effective way for this content to function is to be consistent, you know? Much like, again, a reminder. And so like take a fitness channel, for example, right? Every study shows it. Walks, uh, exercise, muscle building, bodily health, gen general bodily health. These things encourage your mental health to improve. Hey, stop. And if a gym vlog gets you there, you'll be in a better state of mind and that better state of mind can potentially carry over into the things that you're doing for your politics. All this is total conjecture, you know? Going to the gym doesn't make you get go organized, but if you're gonna organize anyway and you watch the political content, but you're lethargic and depressed, if you also watch the video that makes you go to the gym and then you're not as depressed, you'll wanna organize more. Does that make sense? Let me change up the angle on this thing, man. Psst. You lost your box privileges, baby. Sorry, no more. By the way, you know, I'm happy to be checked on this idea, this idea that self-help content is a worthwhile endeavor because it could theoretically 
improve the implementation of our, your politics in, into the world. That might be pretty dumb and wrong. I don't know. Like I said, when I asked my audience about their opinions on self-help, the response was very, very much like the majority of people saying, no, it doesn't work. Why are you, no, why are you asking this? No, are you gonna make a, no, don't make a, don't make a self-help channel, no, please don't. And so I understand that as a perspective that is held and this could be me just moralizing the consumption and creation of content uh, beyond what I need to do. I don't need to have a reason to make self-help content. I can just post gym vlog videos no one's gonna say anything bad they'll just say hey man this is this is a uh, cool man thanks for posting this this helped me or they won't comment and that it's simple as that how long have i been recording for 30 minutes what no way okay i gotta i gotta finish this up man i'm just talking and not actually doing this shit. there's one other element to this that i'm i'm kind of mulling over and i've talked with friends about it and it's very much like maybe maybe not i don't know but there being a community element to something like this, where you're weekly or daily, I'm not uploading daily, but consistently checking in with people by posting or by going into a comment section and being like, hey, what what's going on here, y'all? And people sharing their stuff of, oh, this week I had trouble getting out for a walk or I, I, I got the dishes piled up, but like, I'm gonna do them. I'm gonna do my laundry. It's gonna be great. Building a community, maybe a Discord, but maybe not out of a content outlet. Maybe there's something there. It's all still consumption. It's all still a, a product. Ergo, there's a hierarchy in the community that puts me above everybody else in the comment section because that means the community doesn't function as an organism autonomously without my posting. But maybe that's what a Discord could be for. I don't know. That's maybe I'm thinking of community different in the wrong way. But all these self-help guys, they talk about it uh, like that as a we formed a great community of young men. That's usually the ones that I'm, I'm watching anyways, that are bettering themselves and improving themselves and checking in. A lot of them charge for access to the Discord, which completely defeats the, the point, in my opinion, of self-help if you're paying to do things that will hopefully improve your ability to make money and have free time. That doesn't make any sense. But do they have a point? I don't know. I just don't know. I know there's a book uh, called, what is it called? Pleasure Activism. I read it a while ago. I kind of forget what happens, which is the trouble of being a, an essayist that doesn't remember what happens in the books, but associations with uh, positive pushes towards action and uh, real world politics, you know, maybe not such a bad thing. Who doesn't want to come and bust while they destroy capitalism or whatever? All right, so these dishes are about halfway done and the rack is full, so I'm gonna end the video now. But uh, let me know what you thought. Second channel posting going up. Bye bye now.